Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our prayer service. This is our final one in August, and we have taken the Wednesday nights in August to pray. We do this every summer. We take a month of Wednesdays and we pray. Uh, this summer has been a little different because we're not here together, but we've been praying in our homes, and quite honestly, I really like that. I'm thankful that we have this opportunity to pray in our homes and uh, I, I think we're so much better off if we can incorporate a consistent habit of prayer in our homes. And so for that, I'm very thankful that we've had this opportunity to pray in our homes during the month of August. And thank you for joining in. Thank you for being with us uh, during these Wednesday nights, for being with us right now. We're very thankful that you're able to do this. And I will lead us through a few prayers uh, in a moment uh, but as we have been doing, we're going to just um, have an introduction and then we're going to just let you pray and take some time in your home. And uh, you may want to go ahead and take some time and start preparing. As I've encouraged, uh, you'll want to leave this uh, feed up. You, however you're watching this now, you'll want to leave it up and leave the volume up. We'll have some prayer, uh, some music suitable for prayer uh, that comes on in a little while. And we'll also leave uh, the the... Uh, the, the image of the church here visible so you can see the church. What a wonderful reminder of the place where we have been blessed, the place where we have prayed together, the place that has become sacred to us all. And we just leave that image up there uh, for you in your home. We were here again Sunday. What a great, great service. We felt the presence of the Lord so rich in this place. And I want to say a big thanks to all of you who were able to come but not just those that were able to come, those who were able to log on and watch our services. What a wonderful time we had here in the presence of the Lord. And I feel the Lord is building something here. Uh, the last two Sundays we've been back and we felt a wonderful presence of the Lord. It seems like there is a, a momentum building and I want to uh, continue to be in that flow. And so I, I ask you, be with us again Sunday. If you can be here in person, be here in person. And I want to go over a few things in that regard. And that is, um, try to be here a little early on Sunday. We have uh, many of our, our chairs are roped off to allow for social distancing. And so, if you can get here early, it really helps our ushers to help you find a place to sit. Uh, we, we try to make sure that everyone has uh, an adequate amount of distance between them and the next family unit, and sometimes that takes a little juggling around. You may not be able to sit in the same place that you're accustomed to sitting in, or in the same place you sat last week. And so if you can come a little early, it guarantees uh, our ushers have the most time and flexibility to help you. And it also gives you a much greater probability of getting the seat you want. And so come early, come a few minutes early, and let us help you find a seat that is uh, good for you, and we will do that. So Sunday at 11 o'clock, try to be here a few minutes early if you can. And thank you for complying with the mask order and for social distancing. And uh, we, um, none of us really like that, but we uh, are thankful. If that's the cost of coming to church, then I'm ready to wear a mask in church. And so I appreciate your willingness to comply uh, it's keeping everyone safe, it's in compliance with the City of Austin Ordinance, keeps us out of trouble with the city, and it helps maintain our witness in the community. And so thank you for your compliance. I also want to underscore, though, also the requirement of social distancing. Please help us with that. I know you want to hug each other, and I know that we're a tight community, uh, but particularly in the four-year before and after service, uh, make sure your children and young people stay with family units and... Uh, we encourage uh, you to maintain the social distancing, and I know it is a, a, a challenge, uh, particularly for our young people. Uh, they want to hug and they want to high five. Uh, try to maintain those distances so that we can remain safe and get out of this pandemic as quickly as we can. In that regard, mentioning our youth, uh, I know this is a very trying time for our young people. They've been locked up at home um, uh, all summer long, doing things online, and now they're going to school online, and it is very challenging. And so I appreciate every effort that our families are making to remain connected. I would say a few things in that uh, regard. 
One, we have a great youth ministry that is offering uh, connection opportunities online. And I encourage you, although I know everyone has online fatigue right now, everyone has digital fatigue, I, I understand. But try to make the effort to connect with our youth ministry, with other young people, uh, in the opportunities that we're making available. And we will we'll get through this. We will be through this, um, and we're doing the best that we can. But I, I, I know that it's frustrating, but go ahead and make that effort to connect when you can to our youth ministry. You'll remain connected, you'll remain in the flow, you'll remain in the fellowship, you'll remain in just a sense of knowing what's going on. And so I encourage you to do that, and uh, it will be a blessing to you as well as to our youth ministry. We are waiting a little longer until we have uh, official youth events or small group events, classes, children's ministry events here at the church. We are following the guidelines that are published uh, by the county, by the CDC, uh, guidelines that are recommended for churches. One of the things that we are doing is trying to stay in sync with the school districts, and most of the school districts have resumed uh, school, but with an online presence, and then we'll be migrating into a uh, on-campus, in-person format. We want to wait and see how that goes. We want to make sure that there's a confidence level among families. We want to make sure that there's not um, a, a, a resurgence of cases. Uh, and we don't want what we're doing here at the church to confuse what's going on there, vice versa. And so we need to get a little bit farther down the road before we do that. And so I, I ask for your patience. I ask for your ongoing support as we na try to navigate this the best we can. We haven't been here before, and we are uh, taking the counsel uh, or finding safety in the counsel of multiple churches and ministries and trying to navigate in a way that is healthy. So thank you. Thank you very much. For our children, every other Sunday we stream a kids' space service at 6.30 on Sunday evening. That will be this Sunday. And so gather your kids around the living room or wherever you're able to watch this. Turn on the Kids Space service and you'll be blessed with them. Also, we'll be integrating an occasional uh, Kids Space worship into our main Sunday services uh, so that our kids can have an opportunity to worship while they're here gathered with us. So a few of those things will be coming. And so we ask you to continue to join with us in worship. I'm looking forward to Sunday. Sunday is going to be another great day, and I am, I am eagerly anticipating an outpouring of God's Spirit. And I encourage you to pray for Sunday. Even tonight when we're praying, pray for Sunday. Now, I want to encourage you to get ready for prayer. Um, I've encouraged you to leave this up, this, however you're watching this. But if there's other devices in the room, phones, etc., Go ahead and put the phones on airplane mode. Go ahead and uh, maybe if you, if you don't need your phone to take notes on, uh, go ahead and just turn the phone face down, put it on a table, put it in another room, gather all the family phones. This is a time for prayer, and I don't want us to be distracted. It's not a very long time. We spend about 20 minutes in prayer together. Some of you, I'm sure, continue on longer than that. But this is a time for prayer. It is a time for focus, and so I'm asking you to remove those distractions, uh, get comfortable however you need to get comfortable in your home. And I want to ask you to do this also. For those families who are watching, I want to make sure that you have your children and your young people close to you tonight. I want to pray for our young people and for our children. They're going back to school now, um, and again, most of them are, are, are at home doing online, and they'll be going back to in-person perhaps in a few weeks, but... There are challenges. There are a lot of challenges. There's challenges for the parents. There's challenges for the students. And uh, the whole climate, the political climate, which impacts the educational climate, uh, is not in a good state right now. And I want to pray. I want to pray for our families. I want to pray for our students. I want to pray for all those who are going back to school. And so as you're preparing right now, get the kids in there with you. Get the, get the young people in there um, with you. Uh, I'm going to do this at the beginning of our prayer, so again, I can leave you to pray, and you can pray for the other things that you want to pray for, so we'll do this up front. So gather your children, gather your young people, and I want to pray for them. We want to pray, of course, for the ongoing pandemic. It, uh, we are doing well, and we want to pray for the Lord to continue to give us healing and deliverance from this thing. 
We are seeing some very positive trends here in Texas and uh, in Austin, Travis County, Williamson County. But we want to pray for that to continue. And I want to say again a big thanks to God for keeping our church. Yes, we've had some tragedies and we've had uh, a dozen or so cases. Uh, but for a church our size, we have been very blessed. I know churches that have been hit so much harder than we have. Churches not nearly as big as ours who have suffered many times more than we have. And I want to say praise be to God for keeping His hand on our church. And I want us to continue to pray, pray that protection, pray that staying hand of the Lord would be upon our church. Pray for the hurricane. The hurricane is coming through, as you know. And we're very close to that. Uh, pray the Lord's protection on uh, the, uh, people and uh, the things of our, 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 where we live, our, our, our belongings, but most of all, human life. Pray God's safety and protection and uh, pray for that. Also, I want to pray for Brother Charles Hatcher. This is the father of Krista Miller. He is in the hospital and needs healing. I want to pray for him. And I know you have needs tonight. I want to pray for healing and deliverance. Pray for God's hand to be on you. And of course, we're going to pray for our children and our youth. So here we go. We're going to begin with prayer. Again, we're going to enter with the time of worship. And uh, I'm going to, after we uh, spend a few minutes in worship, I'm going to ask you to gather your children and to gather your young people around you. And we're going to pray for them. And moms and dads, we're going to pray for you. So it's going to be family prayer. But I want us to create that atmosphere. Would you do that? Get comfortable however you want to pray. Kneel, stand, sit. You may want to walk, whatever is good for you. But why don't we enter His presence to get together? Amen. Let's enter with thanksgiving and praise together. Could we do that right now? Lord Jesus, we thank you. God, we come, Lord, before you with a grateful heart. God, we come tonight rejoicing in your goodness. Thank you for the way that you touched us on Sunday. Thank you for your abundant mercies that we feel, Lord, for your compassions that never fail us. Lord, your mercies are new every morning. We are able to stand here tonight with thanksgiving, not because of our faithfulness or not because of the good things we have done, but we stand here tonight because you are a merciful God and you are a gracious God. And God, we offer praise to you tonight. I want to thank you, Lord, for keeping your hand on this church during the pandemic. I want to thank you, Lord, for keeping your hand on this church economically, spiritually, socially, in every way, Lord. We still feel the unity of the Spirit. We still feel, Lord, the cohesion as a church. We still feel that unity. We still feel that there's forward progress and there's vision before us. God, I want to thank you that you have preserved us. I want to thank you, Lord, that you've kept your hand on us. Most of our people still have good jobs and most of our people have their health tonight. Lord, we want to give you praise. We want to give you thanks because you're a faithful God. God, I want to thank you today, Lord, that we were able to gather in this place on Sunday and we were able to feel your victory. We are able to feel the overwhelming sense of your presence. God, I want to thank you, Lord, that your spirit moves freely, Lord, where we praise you. Even in homes right now, you are moving, Lord. You are stirring hearts. God, your presence can be felt, Lord. Your, your goodness, Lord, is around us. Lord, you are surrounding us even tonight as we lift our voices and we lift our praises to you. God, we lift voices of gratitude to you because you are the faithful God. You are God and there is none beside you. You are God and you reign alone tonight. We lift up voices of worship and praise. Lord, in our homes tonight, receive this worship, Lord. Receive our praise tonight. Lord, in homes across Austin, some of them, Lord, are occupied by single adults. Some of them are occupied by senior citizens. Some of them are occupied by families. Lord, in these homes all across town, we are lifting up voices of praise to you tonight. I pray that you would receive this worship. I pray that you would receive this praise tonight. God, I pray that you would go before us even for the remainder of this week. I pray that you would protect, Lord, from this hurricane. I pray that you would keep us safe. Keep your people safe, God. I pray that there would be a hedge of protection around your churches, around your people. I pray, Lord, that you would guard and protect and keep in every way. God, I pray that you would continue to protect us, continue to guide us, continue to lead us. You see the needs, Lord, of our church. You see the needs that we've lifted up to you. 
Brother Hatcher and others, Lord, those that we've called out, those that are on our prayer list that we've emailed out throughout the week, those that are on our prayer page on our, on our social media sites. I pray that you would intervene. Keep your hand on us, Lord. Keep your hand on us, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you gather your family together now? And I'm particularly thinking of the school-aged children and young people anyone that's going to school right now in families, moms and dads, I want you to gather together. And I want you to gather together where you can touch one another. I want you to hold hands and I want you to join your faith together right now. Moms and dads, I want you to take authority and dominion in your homes tonight. I want you to pray blessing and strength and protection over your family, over your children and your youth right now. Young people and children, I want you to pray. I want you to invoke the presence of the Lord. I want you to invoke the protection of God. I want you to ask God to keep you and to order your steps. I want you to intervene on behalf of yourself and on the behalf of your fellow church, uh, your, your fellow uh, youth group and, and children's ministry uh, uh, friends in this church. I want you to intercede on behalf of all of the people in our church that are going to school. Could we do that now? Would you begin to pray? Moms and dads, pray a prayer of intercession and authority right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, we declare your victory over our children. We declare your victory over our young people. God, I pray that there would be a hedge of protection around their minds, a hedge of protection around their spirits. God, as most of them are, are learning at home, I pray that you would guard their minds and spirits. God, I pray that you would protect them, Lord, from evil and wicked influences. I pray that you would keep them. Lord, from the words and seeds of doubt that would be sown by those who don't believe, I pray that you would let them learn the things that are, that are true. I pray that they would reject the things that are false. I pray, Lord, that they would be strengthened to step into those classrooms, be they virtual or be they literal. Let them step into those spaces with faith. Let them step into those, those spaces with a testimony. Let them step into those spaces with confidence. God, I pray for moms and dads, Lord, who are doing double duty, who are trying to work perhaps from home and trying to uh, function in, in roles of teacher or tutor or whatever the case might be. I pray for your grace and for your strength. I pray you would cover our families right now, God. Cover our families, Lord, children and youth and parents. Put a hedge of protection. And Lord, we don't have to be in, uh, 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 isolated in, in the broader sense, but we can be witnesses during this time. We can witness to other students and we can witness to other parents. We can shine a light in this darkness. We're not the only ones going through this, but all of our neighbors and our friends and our co-workers and our fellow students and fellow parents of students, they're going through the same thing. Let us shine a light in darkness. Let us speak faith in the midst of chaos. Let us stand as a testimony, Lord, of your goodness and your faithfulness. And we give you the praise. Can we just offer a praise to the Lord right now for this specific request? That the Lord is going to keep our children. The Lord is going to give us strength. Yes, would you claim victory in your home right now? Claim victory for your children, for your young person right now. Lord, we claim victory over every adversary. We claim victory over every circumstance. Move in our homes, Lord. Protect our children in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want us to continue in our prayer right now. Would you pray for those that you know that need prayer and healing, deliverance? Pray for the needs in your home and your family. Pray for your loved ones. And when you're done with those lists that you can think of, I want you to pray for the church. You'll see the... You'll see the platform zoomed out in a moment. I want you to pray for our church. Pray for Sunday. Pray for anointing. Pray for a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we give you that praise by faith today. God, I pray, Lord, that you would be with every home right now that is praying. I pray that there would be an outpouring and, a, and an insurgence of your Spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I loose a liberty in every home right now. Let there be a sense of victory. Let there be a sense of breakthrough. Let there be a sense of purpose right now. Lord, in every home, Lord, let there be a moving of your spirit. Every home that dares to bow a knee before you. Every home that, that is willing to lift a voice of praise to you right now. I pray that there would be breakthrough, Lord. I pray that there would be a sense of victory. I pray that there would be a sense, Lord, of revival and purpose. Hallelujah. That's it, church. Would you lift your voices? 
That's it. Continue to praise Him. Continue to intercede to Him tonight. Lord, we give you glory and praise tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.